It's a Sunday morning here, about 8.30 in the morning, and we are about to get started. But first, before we do anything, we got to give the lawn a quick mow just to clean things up, get things out of the way. And as you can see, because we are in fall, things are getting cooler, the lawn does have some morning dew on it. I wouldn't be too worried about uh, morning dew in general because just by uh, bagging your clippings in the morning, especially this time of year, that's what we want to do. And with the blades spinning, what you're doing is you're giving the blades airflow, so that's going to help dry them out and it's going to, you know, lower the amount of humidity. And if you look a little closer, hold on, you can see the blades are a little bit dull. I'm going to be sharpening that this week. But let me tell you. Other than that, there's nothing more beautiful than when you're a lawn kid and you get to mow your lawn at 8.30 in the morning. Just nothing beats it. It's quiet. You hear the birds chirping. Blue skies. It's a beautiful sight. What's up guys? I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank you for coming back for yet another week. So today I got a really special treat for you. In fact, this year and this day marks the first time that I'm ever going to attempt to restore my currently horrible looking lawn. What this is from back here is, remember those fires we have in the summer? You guys may remember, I put it on the channel a couple times. This is what happens when you burn, when you have a fire pit. And you have a fire in your lawn for about two or three days straight. And this actually came from the fire just creeping off the uh it leaked off the fire pit and then it started itself here under the fire pit and all around and really the reason this caught is because this area went into like a quick dormancy stage like what i mean by that is that the heat being radiated off of that from the past two fires we had was all put right here and so this was um a couple degrees hotter than the rest of the lawn and because of that it went into a dormancy pattern and because it was so dormant, hard, it was able to catch on fire easiest in. This is what we're left with for now. So we've been having fires and we've been having a lot of them because we recently had our deck rebuilt up there and we had all the old wood sitting right here so that explains all the compaction right here. So we, we burned through all that wood and then we had a couple incidents where the fire leaked off the fire pit and started on fire under here. Of course you could see it's coming back, but with all the steps we're going to do today, all we're going to do is we're just going to speed that up and encourage it. And things are still looking green. Things are still looking good back here. It's just we're having some problems with like some areas that didn't have enough time to thicken up last year. And because of that, they're very weak. They're a little bit brown compared to the rest of the lawn. They just really stand out and they look horrible. As well as in addition to my parkway over here, where as you can see, I got a lot of competition over here. First thing being is that this area doesn't get enough water. It doesn't get enough sunlight, all sorts of things. And that's mainly 
mainly because I got these giant Bradford pear trees over here, as you can see, and they are really mature, which means that any time you do try to get water on this area, what will happen is any water that does sit on the lawn, it will sit there for a little bit, and then eventually these mature roots, what they'll do is they'll steal the water as soon as it absorbs and gets down into the soil. And that's how you end up with what you got right here. As opposed to this area back here, which has actually been damaged by too much direct sun and very little water all this summer. You see, this area, it was actually looking really great all the way from last fall to early summer. In fact, here's a clip from when I was spraying weeds. You can see the droplets on the weed, but if you look around, you can see I got a very nice, thick patch of green lawn love over here. And then all of a sudden, in later June, we get hit with this hot and dry spell for two solid months, and this is what you're left with. This brings me to the first question I know you guys are going to ask. Jake, why are we doing this fall lawn recovery program? What is the purpose? Fall is a time where the temperatures are going to start to go down, we're going to start to get more rain, which means the lawns are going to green up and they're going to start to thicken up on their own, which means that the roots are going to start to push deeper. Now that's the reason why we're doing this fall lawn recovery program, is to increase deeper root growth. you got to remember, the key with any lawn is deeper and thicker, deeper and thicker. Deeper and thicker deeper and thicker. When is the best time to start? The best time to start is when you're going to start to see those cooler temperatures and those rainy periods coming back into play, which is typically going to be the first to second week of September. First week of fall at the latest, which is going to be around later September. And the reason we want to start then is so we have that longer weather window of warmer periods and we're getting rain because we want to allow that seed we put down, especially those of you who are seeding with seeds that come in longer germination periods, like 21 days, we want to allow that seed enough time to germinate, grow in, and harden off before it's a affected by that heavy frost that we're going to get possibly in early November. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and aerate the lawn. Aeration is a process where you're removing cores of soil out of the lawn that are about a couple inches long and about the diameter of a dime. And what this is going to do is it's going to encourage what we were talking about earlier. Deeper and thicker deeper and thicker. Because what you're doing is you're allowing that compacted ground to relax and relax and also what you're doing is you're creating more area for those roots to grow. Now of course I recommend that you rent an actual aeration machine. You can actually rent an aerator at your local home depot or your local dealer for about 20 bucks an hour with a three to four hour minimum. And one thing you're going to have to consider is how are you going to transport the aerator to your house and back. So this is where you're going to have to consider taking out a little bit of extra income, renting a U-Haul, borrowing a trailer, whatever you you got to do and in this case I don't have to do any of that here's why and I recommend you guys do this because this will save you money and you'll make a friend out of it if you have a neighbor two houses down in fact this is my neighbor's house and he has a pickup truck like you see right here then there you go you could save money so what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to make an agreement because you know it is rude to make your neighbors do something without doing something in return for them so what you gotta do is you just gotta kinda make a deal with them like t tell them this to let them know that if they're gonna take time out of their day to do something for you you gotta do the same in return what you can do is you can tell them I wanna rent this aerator because I'm doing this fall lawn program on my lawn and to make up for you bringing the aerator here and back what I'll do is I'll offer you a free aeration for the three hours I have the machine and you know what if you tell that to them there's no way they can say no because they know that if you're gonna be doing something to their lawn like aeration they know it's gonna be beneficial in this case it is because like I talked about it's gonna be really good and encouraging deeper root growth and it's gonna encourage the lawn to thicken up Last guy in the door rents. Last guy. Oh yeah. Last guy in the door is renting. Last no. guy, huh? No. You were the last one in. No. What's up, guys? We need the air. What's one? This one or this one? Whichever one. This one. This one. This will work. <laughs> okay, careful.
question you're going to ask when we're all done is how heavy is an aerator? Well, let me just say that you're not going to be able to lift it alone. So make sure you have help 100% of the time. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put down our grass seed. What is the best grass seed to buy? Anywhere at your big box store, Scott's or Pennington are great choices. It doesn't matter what mix. I recommend that you get one that's both sun and shade so you can save a little bit of money there. You don't wanna to have to buy two different bags when you could just buy one that has both sun and shade. It'll work for anything. Another thing to keep in mind about your grass seed are germination rates. Because you know, depending on the type of grass you're seeding with, one grass type can take a little bit longer to germinate than another one. For example, perennial ryegrass, which is a common grass type around here, will germinate within 7 to 10 days. Where compared to another grass type, Kentucky bluegrass, which is actually known to be a little bit better against climatical problems, but it does have a longer germination window, and that's at about 24 days. What I recommend to use, if you're watching this video right now, you're going to be in the beginning of October. I don't recommend a mixture that's more Kentucky bluegrass because that germination period is going to be too long and we're going to start getting cooler here pretty soon and we're going to get that frost coming in November. Look at your grass seed and make sure that you're getting one that contains more perennial rye in the mix because that will germinate within 7 to 10 days and it'll be able to grow in and harden off a lot faster than you would if you did Kentucky Blue. We're going to put this down at about two pounds per thousand minimum because I'm pretty limited here. If you want you can go higher to three, four, five pounds per thousand or really, you know what, you could just say it and throw her down. It doesn't matter. As long as we get seed to soil contact, we will be fine. In addition to all that, we're not necessarily trying to let the seed fall into the holes. So what we've done now is we've opened the lawn up. We got the lawn breathing now. It's going to thicken up on its own. We're throwing down the grass seed to fill in any of the thin spots that remain on top, you know, just to help them fill in a little bit faster. Next up is the starter fertilizer. Now the reason we want to put this down is to help with root growth because as we talked about right now, it's fall time, the temperatures are going to start coming down, it's going to start raining more often, and the lawns are going to start to green up and push more roots because of that. And the best thing to do right now is to encourage that and that's what starter fertilizer will do. is going to be a app of full strength malorganite. We're going to put it down at 15 pounds per thousand square feet. That should give us about three quarter pound of nitrogen. The reason we're putting malorganite down is to help introduce some organic material into the lawn. Again, we're going to get nitrogen boost. That's great. We're going to get iron boost. That's great. But we're really putting it down to get the organic material into the soil to help build the soil base and just start softening up the ground so the roots can spread and grow deeper. 